going live, describing Clowns County, Georgia. F it, we'll do it live. Do it live. My sentiments exactly, Bill O'Reilly. Um, however, I'm not going to be involved in any kind of sexual harassment. Anyways, so what happens in Clowns County? 19 years and counting of harassment by the local police department, Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. Not not exclusively. I've been followed by the Georgia State Patrol before. I feel like they honed in and used uh, some technology on me and just you know kind of tested it out or whatnot. But you know when you're followed for eight miles on a motorcycle, basically going to work and you're doing absolutely nothing, all of a sudden you get pulled over and. The cop that pulls you over wants to immediately go disregard any of your, you know, consent. Doesn't matter whether you consent or not. Reach directly into my bag, Officer Green, who has been reprimanded for pulling people over in Lowndes County for rolling stop signs when absolutely nobody is coming, nobody's hurt. He's like a half a mile down the road spying on people, writing them tickets. So what do they do? They reprimand him and tell him that he can only do that kind of crap maybe in Tifton or something. All right, that happened in 2007, I was followed to work. You know why? Because I was next to somebody who wanted to sell me a firearm, okay? Continually wanting to sell me a firearm. Come to find out this guy's involved, him and some other guy are involved with like, something involved with a firearm and I'm getting followed. I'm getting harassed about that. I got arrested for that because of my uh, cannabis that I had on me at that time. But it didn't matter. It wasn't his, none of his business in the freaking first place. Okay? Yeah, I don't deny that, but it, was it trumped up charges? Hell yeah, it's always that way. All right, there's one incident out of the way. How, I can't even, you know, you guys have no idea. I can't even tell you how many there are. There's too many to name. I've only listed six, but there's more. I'm listing six from the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. Let me stick to that because I wanted to at least throw that in there. It makes me pissed off. You see how frustrating this is. This is my entire life, career smashed, life just basically left to being nothing but a busser, servant, you know, in some way, shape, or form, not utilizing any kind of talents whatsoever, not utilizing education. Doesn't matter. You're a felon. You're a felon for using cannabis, a plant that basically now I've been prescribed. <laughs> Oh, lovely. And now they're turning over convictions. Yeah. Yeah. What about your entire life that's been screwed up? Your entire freaking life. All right. So 18 years old. Boom. Marijuana arrest. Trumped up charges. From a misdemeanor to a felony. Immediately. Even though it was less than an ounce. Uh, get a public pretender. Uh, he wasn't even a public pretender. He was the future um, um, head of the public defender's office. John Ken Edwards, senior. His son, a judge, in my case, John Ken Edwards, Jr. 1998, charged with marijuana, trumped up from a misdemeanor to a felony. What did they try to get me to do? They tried to get me to try to tell on somebody, not the officers, a lawyer trying to bargain with me when I was like eight, 18 years old. Wait, nine, let's see. Let's see. Yeah, 19 years old, 18, 19 years old. So, yeah, okay. Um, then, I'm 38 now, by the way. Uh, just turned not long ago. Uh, so, basically have a series of charges that I did not do driving another, that's, that's one, that's the marijuana thing I just described, cannabis. Let's keep it at cannabis because their term is marijuana because that makes it illegal then. Cannabis is, makes it medicinal, it's just, yeah. Just like in Florida, how retarded is it that we can vape it but we can't smoke it anyways. All right, so basically, we've got trumped up charges from that. Then, get pulled over in a friend's vehicle, okay? I get charged, I did not steal nor hurt or do any illegal activity, okay? Now, if you want to consider being in the car, you know, um, 
when I did not witness any crime take place and all of a sudden I'm next to somebody who committed some kind of crime, which wasn't even a crime. I guess they're claiming that this guy did stuff. We got charged with all kind of stuff. It was me and two other guys. How does three people get involved? How, when, okay, let me show you. I'm gonna try to calm down, okay? It's hard to talk about this crap. <sighs> two people get pulled over early in the morning, okay? With, like I said, driving, I'm like 19, I'm, I'm only 19 years old at this point, okay? Um, so, basically, next to a 17 year old, we get pulled over. I come to find out this guy is getting bribed with cigarettes by the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office to give information. He's addicted to cigarettes. Bribed him with cigarettes to give information. So guess what happens through that? I end up taking a plea bargain from this almighty head of the public, future head of the public pretender's office, John Ken Edwards Sr. And yes, I'm calling you out, buddy. Uh, so, John Ken Edwards Sr., all right? Uh, this is just makes me mad, I'm sorry. And I got distractions or whatever, the people driving around. All right, so, anyways, accept a plea bargain and get this, a first offenders act, okay? After, after the misdemeanor cannabis charge or whatever, that he got me to plead a first offender to that too, which would avail me of absolutely nothing. Why would you get a first, why would you plead a first offenders act, which is supposed to clear ex and exonerate your name after completion for a misdemeanor? I didn't have a sexual charge. I had a cannabis charge. Okay, so they, they tried to claim that they violated that so they can run on in with the next charge from the GBI. Okay, I don't know when this law gets at enacted or if it actually takes effect or has any bearing on me whatsoever. But that the GBI would have to overturn any uh, double pleas, which I was allowed to plea by John Ken Edwards Sr. for the second first offender act for a felony, okay? The felony was for this bull crap that I was telling you about with the three guys, the one 17 year old boy being bribed by a cigarette who basically told them that I did, that I guess I was involved with something. I have no idea. I never even saw the motion of discovery, never even knew what a motion of discovery was. Had no clue. My parents had no clue. Totally took advantage of us. Thousands of dollars, my life, everything, years. My grandmother's inheritance was only $2,000 to each grandchild. It went straight to probation for clowns, County, and through that, what I just told you, you know what I was charged with? Theft by in, uh, two counts. Look it up. Look my name up if you won't believe me. Alan Watson. Okay, and I live in Georgia. It was Valdosta, Georgia. But they put the they put the crap in wrong. They put it happened in a different county. That's how sick this crap is. It gets so bad to where I can't even get to the bottom of what the hell's going on in my life. So, basically, two counts of attempt, attempt to commit theft by entering a motor vehicle, okay? All right, and then, okay, so you hear that charge, right? Then, how do I get stuck with restitution for a boat motor and a, a really expensive shotgun and, and, and something else? For years paying on this, paying supervision fees, going to community service, I did 360 hours of community service. I went to boot camp for 97 days because I got a seven day DR for bringing food back to the dorm because I couldn't finish eating my food as fast as some of the others shoveling food as fast as they can for every meal. Waking up at the butt crack of dawn. Yeah, it made a man out of me. You see me right here, don't you? Trutland boot camp number one, sir. Move like lightning, sound like thunder. Highly motivated, truly dedicated, rough, tough, and can't get enough. Boot camp motivated, sir. Huh. That's me, boy, girl, all you out there. That's me. That's me. I'm out. I'm out, and I'm going I'm to put it all out. I'm out. So, basically, that's, that's the starting of the ruining of the, my life. So, from 18 years old on to 38 years old. That has had an impact. 
continually, and it didn't stop there. The harassment didn't stop. There's her racial profiling. There's six incidents of racial profiling. There's torture in the in the jails. They basically torture you until you plead out because I could not get out. You say, why would you plead out to something like that, Alan? Why would you do that? It's your fault. You're an adult. You're 18 years old. You should have known that you pled out to something you didn't do. Um, you know, well, uh, I'll tell you like this. Until you're in a situation where you're sitting there and I, with the shoes I was sitting in, the flip-flops I was sitting in, putting a cup of ice to your aorta that was made out of a peanut butter jar that somebody had to purchase off of the store because you don't just get issued a peanut butter cup. <laughs> Sticking that on my aorta to stay cool. How you like that? Okay? That's just one... That's nothing. Kidnapping. Brand, uh, heads being bashed on the concrete. Blood being spilled on the concrete. Uh, that guy at Mulvaney. I'm going to pull, call you out, buddy. I remember you from the inside. You smacked my, my friend in the back of the head. You smacked my friend on the back of the head. Billy Jacks. Billy Jacks, if you're out there, shout out to Billy Jacks. But I'm calling I'm calling you out, Mulvaney, for punching him in the back of the head in the Lowndes County Jail. And you, all y'all surrounded him. He had already gotten into a fight in the jail. His eye was already black, you know. His eye was already black. You know, had, it, had a skull for whatever. The officer wants to rub it in his face, starts, you know, taunting him. Next thing you know, he's like, all right. So he steps outside. What happens? All the officers jump on him. That's what happens. And then, they, you know, it's not enough. They already all have them to do. They got to get behind him and, you know, act like you're going to, you know, assist in this so-called arrest of Billy by punching him in the back of the head and then grabbing on the back. You guys are sick. That same guy that punched Bill in the back of the head broke somebody's shoulders and now... And now, and got sued and lost. And now in the Lowndes County, you're paying for that. Now, and then now he's got me, and God knows how many now since then, because it's been almost two years since this case. They are dragging ass with your tax dollars. And I just get so frustrated. But he, in this case, he is totally a part of the malicious prosecution, 100% violating of my rights. Him and Busby, everybody I'm calling out, they are all a part of it. All of them. They know exactly what they were doing. Even the ones that I did, that aren't even in this report that you tried to hide. You're all a part of this too. You're all a part of this. That's why you're all getting it. And I'm not. I'm going all the way back. Supreme Court just ruled that you have to pay a victim. You can't get away from paying a victim. You owe me. You all owe me for this negligence and garbage that's gone on for my life and destroyed my family and me and my career, but you're not going to bring me down. You see me. I prayed when I was in jail. You have my parents against me. You told my parents a lie about me. You told them I had $8,000 worth of cocaine. telling every show in the whole world that I had an InfoWars sticker on the back of my car on the rear window okay all right we're, we're gonna have some explaining to do we have some explaining to do I just six incidences I'm just that's the last one with just Mulvaney and Pachote there's more before that happened, you know about the, I've already made the video about the last two, I'll, I'll just go ahead and mention it anyways. The 2010 incident, being followed from the tight ends place of employment, working as a TJ, with other fellow black entrepreneurs, artists, citizens of the state, citizens of the, citizens of the United States. You standing out there looking like you're going to war with Iraq. <laughs> You think you're going to war with Iraq out front of Remerton Bar? Out, out front of the Remerton Bar, really? Yeah, okay. Okay. You know, I, I just, you know, you've been terrorizing this community. So, I get followed. <clears throat> going to get juice for the bar. No, you're not doing that, boy. No, 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 no. We're going to frisk you. We're going to stop you. And there's not going to be a reason in the freaking world. There's nothing you can do about it, right? 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 
Isn't that right? Okay. Yeah, Lowndes County Sheriff's Office follows me, stalks me from the bar, pulls me over with the traffic infraction. You know about it because I posted the video. Same thing, same exact way, same exact thing, trying to throw it in my face, trying to think, trying to basically claim, hey, you can't do anything. We own you. We've owned your whole entire life. You're nothing. We own you. We're going to stomp you until you die. We're going to have our, our boots right on your throat. Get pulled over. Traffic infraction, same thing. Failure to maintain lane, 2015, 2010. Call the dogs, failure to consent. No consent to search, call the dogs immediately. Dogs automatically hit every single time. No if answer, but dog scratches its ear, nothing. Doesn't matter. It's getting in. So we get in, find nothing. No narcotics on me, nor in my car. Okay, none. None, none whatsoever. What was your excuse for the 2010 incident? Because you just let me go with a little traffic citation, didn't you? A little warning citation, but little did you know I was going to hold on to that and show the entire world what you were doing and what you've done. <laughs> Thank God for answering my prayers. Because something's going to be done about you now. Something's going to be done. It's not going to keep going on. America will be great again. And you Democrats, that's another thing. You were a bunch of Democrats after me. The whole reign, your whole period of time. And what am I? I'm a Republican. I'm openly a Republican. On the internet, openly. Been doing activism in that county. Also, that's another reason you might have targeted me, huh? So I got to throw that out there too. Because I never, you know, these things, you don't even think about it. When you're a victim of this stuff, you don't know all the reasonings why you're being a victim yet. You have to, it's, you're traumatized at first. Look how many years it's been till I got to the point where I could even give you this information. So I just wanted to tell you this. I'm sorry. I get you know I get emotional. You know I can't help it. It happened to me. It can happen to you, and that's why I'm trying to stop this. And yeah, don't think, don't make, you know, me think, or make you think that this is easy in any way. I'm sorry, but you know this is not easy. You know I might smile every once in a while. I try to keep my head up, and I do things. You know cannabis. You know extremely helpful. Completely legal, canasense, you know, dot com. Your boy here, if you want, you need some, you know, a sponsorship and a team that'll support you. It's one one four four is my number. So just, you know, throw me in there. You know, everything you buy, and then everybody that you 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 help out, then everything that they buy. So they just they want us to get started out, and it's awesome. It's awesome. I tried the uh, so far. I've tried the um, the Keef, the flowers, and the absolute extract pen excellent 100 percent awesome so anyways i just want to let you guys know what was going on um so like i said i'm gonna post more i can't just keep going on like this i don't want to make this too long i mean i know you guys are listening to me there's so many incidents um but i want to at least throw it a little bit more hold on all right so the Lowndes county jail you know, why am I making stuff about the Lowndes County Jail? All right, well, kidnapping, beating, bashing of brains. I've seen all. I've seen it, a lot of it. I've seen a cop arrested. You know, we, we witnessed that an officer was arrested. We all got put on lockdown. He put a pin to somebody's throat and threatened them, and he got arrested. But nobody in the county heard about that. You guys didn't hear about that, see? You're not going to hear about it because it's just, I guess, probably like the reason why you don't hear about stuff about KJ maybe is because somebody from the uh, Lowndes County High School goes over and starts working for the Valsa Daily Times. You know, like at, like the one that was working there during the incident, all of a sudden now he's all, you know, an advocate for, you know, this, you know, this perspective. So, I mean, anyways, you can form your own theories about that, but I already know what, there was foul play in that garbage. And that's the sheriff that's involved with my case, Sheriff Prine, okay? He's the one involved with this. He's in the latest incident anyways, and for a while, you know. Um, but the Remerton Police Department, you know, going to tight ends, just going as a patron, just going as, you know, a citizen or whatever, just basically uh, get harassed from there. Came right up to me. Hey, uh, this is, there's two incidences at the uh, bar. One with my cousin, we got arrested, just walking, trying to walk to the car from the bar. I've worked there. There's a place where the cats go like freely, like feral cats. There's a place that it's built, you know, basically we were walking right next to that. So if you're telling me that a feral cat can walk to and fro, and there's obviously, <laughs> I know the owner, I work there. It's not like I don't know anything about this establishment or the area. I was walking to my place of residence, well, actually my fiance's place of residence. I had just met her not long. 
um, you know, before that this happened. So we're trying to walk to her place, which is like probably what, you know, 200 yards away from the bar, maybe if that, I don't know, something like that. So, uh, basically we get stopped, intercepted. Ultimately it's like, Oh, you're about to piss on the uh, corner, huh? We're just coming around the corner. Oh, you're about to piss on that. No, no, we weren't. And he, the reason why I said that was because we were talking about urinating because I asked it, uh, my cousin, had he had gone to the, uh, the restroom in the bar and he said, no, he didn't get a chance. So, so basically, uh, we end up ultimately getting arrested for disorderly conduct because my cousin didn't want to give any information to the officers about where he was going or what he was doing, basically. Because he was in he was in fear, basically. He's just like, what the hell's going on, probably. I'm like used to this crap. You know, this <laughs> this isn't the first time for me. So I'm like, you know, okay, uh, yeah, I know what's going on here. I, you know, I was like, what am I what are we doing wrong? And then it just basically boiled down to my cousin pulled out his phone and tried to start recording him. He immediately gets grabbed by Tinsley, Officer Tinsley of the Ramerton Sheriff's Office, and he had left her police department, not sheriff's office. Uh, and because it's a landlocked bullshit county uh, town that, that just basically extorts people for money for DUIs who accept plea bargains for uh, DUIs in exchange for not having their record uh, submitted to the state. Yeah, let that little fact be known. But Tinsley basically, uh, you know, grab, hunt, grabs Hunter's hand, Hunter Baxter, and I'll go ahead and call you out there, Hunter. Um, uh, so you, you know. You can attest to this, and this happened, you know, it's a fact. It doesn't matter whether you attest to it or not, it happened. I've got records of it. So basically, um, we got uh, that issue going on to where since he starts trying to record, we get arrested. And I'm like, what are my charges? And it's like disorderly conduct. And what does Lane say to me, Officer Lane? Uh, he's a black officer. Tinsley's the big, fat, white officer with rosacea on his cheeks. Big, fat. Yeah. Lane's a newer, tall, lankier, skinnier guy. I think he's gone by now. I don't even think he's still there. But anyways, he said, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Well, I call, I call internal affairs about this. What happens? I get Scott Goodwin on the phone. Scott Goodwin says, uh, Scott Goodwin says, uh, oh, no, yeah, so what happened? You know, what officer did you do? Oh, I said, I said uh, yeah, Lane told me to not sweat it. You know, I told him what happened. He said, oh, I said, is that appropriate? He said, no, that's not appropriate. So I was like, yeah, I'll sure enough say something here or whatever. So that's the last I uh, thought I was going to hear of Scott Goodwin maybe in the whole incident. Or maybe I would hear something back say, hey, you know, that wasn't appropriate. I'm sorry about that. I told him. Nope, nothing back. You know where I hear back from him? In this 2015 case, August the 17th of 2015, stalking and harassing. This guy, this guy, he's something else. He gets up first. He gets fired. He leaves the Dallas County Sheriff's Office for a battery against a woman at a like a football game or something. You know, um, guess he's drunk. Walk around with a firearm. You know, just the usual thing. Go to a football game. You know, you got a firearm on you, knife and shit. You know, beat up on women. You know, like that's the that's what you do, right? That's what you do. That's what's cool, right? So that's what he did, and that's what he did. I got arrested for. Then he resigned because he was so embarrassed about it, and it's a shame. Yeah, it is a shame. You were shameful. You, you were in shame about what happened. Yeah. So he quits, gets hired on at Ramerton. Then he gets hired back on at Lowndes County Sheriff's Office. Then he's he's uh, arresting me, kidnapping me, stalking me, illegally arresting Heather, false imprisonment, racially profiling, you name it. <laughs> All right, Busby was there the night that me and Hunter got arrested, taunting me, saying, you're Watson, right? Yeah, you're Watson, right? Yeah, yeah, I am Watson, right? You see me? I'm Watson. I'm Watson, and you are a piece of trash. That's what you are. So, uh, you know, let's keep going. You know, I wouldn't. I, I don't want to say that Mulvaney, Mulvaney wasn't there either and Pachote because that's their whole squad. They were definitely working that night. They were definitely working that night. And then the other night was the night that they were all out. I'm up there with my black friend, uh, Charles. I'm calling you out, Charles Pollard. Uh, you know, holler at you, whatever. You know, this is what the deal is. You want to attest to this, go ahead, whatever. But this is what happened. So, you know, basically, just chilling at the bar. 
you know, and there's a balcony, see, where they can just sit there and stare at you in their little Iraq outfits. And it's not like, I mean, it's just, I mean, it's almost like, I mean, you don't just sit there and stare at them. Obviously, it's awkward. They're just staring at you. Like, they're just staring at you the whole freaking time, making you feel uncomfortable. They've been sued for this shit before. $750,000 lawsuit from Mulligans down the street. We're talking Remerton Place, Valdosta, Georgia. All right, so... Like I said, don't discount Mulvaney was there. Speaking of Mulvaney, when I got followed in 2010, Mulvaney and Busby were the ones searching through my car <laughs> after the dog just jumped in my car with the doors wide open, basically. What in the world? There's nothing in my car. Oh my God, even if there was, what are you gonna do? I mean, if 90% if of the world's currency has cocaine residue on it, I posted a video about that. What the hell are you gonna do with 90% of bills that have something that's gonna trigger a dog. How the hell are you gonna justify that? I mean, how is that, how are we not the dumbest? We are the, like some of the dumbest people. We have some great stuff and it's beautiful. Look at this. This is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful town. I love this town. I'm away from Valdosta, thank God, thank God, thank God. But you know what, I'm not gonna let these people just terrorize me for the rest of my life. I've gotta tell you what happened. I've gotta, you know, we gotta have some compensation for my family, the victims, me. My life has been completely in ruin since everything that's happened to me. And that's why they've been preying on me. It's because I was so no I was so vulnerable at a young age that they were and my parents were not just, you know, completely broke. But they had enough to barely help me out, basically, staying afloat, you know. Barely. And, you know, just so, so much stress. But yeah, so much of a detriment. 2006. Followed. What's the reason? Anonymous call. What's the reason? Uh, the driver of my, of my father's vehicle at the time. Once again, what was my father's vehicle at that time? It was a Honda Civic. A Honda Civic. Okay, the Honda Civic that was parked outside of a residence. Okay. Of a guy named... William Holmes, okay? <laughs> I don't care about calling you out too, boy. You guys think you guys are so slick. So this guy basically, he smokes a joint in the car with me. Tells the police that I was there or something or to follow me, calls them while he has me waiting there. Cause it took me, it took a long ass time for his ass to get there. I had to call his freaking mom. I, I called his mom, I was like, what are you doing? Like, where's your son? He just called me. Like, he just called me out here and said that, like, between my classes, he was wanting to, you know, smoke a joint or something with me. And he was, like, going to be right there, I guess, or whatever, you know. I was like, okay, yeah, sure, I'll come over there. You know, <laughs> yes, I turned to cannabis whenever I've been through this crap. From 18 years on, for something I didn't do. I mean, you tell me you're not going to be going through traumatic. <laughs> you guys don't even, some of you really know who I am. And you know a lot, you know exactly what I've been through a lot. Well, not exactly, but you know a whole lot more than what the masses are gonna know, you know. You know I'm not BSing. If, you, if I am, call me out. Put it like that, call me out. Sue me. So, William Holmes, right outside of Al Alden Street, calls me over there. What's the reason that Lowndes County's behind me in an unmarked SUV? with Andrew Denmark and Sergeant Farmer. Andrew Denmark driving around. This guy looks like Machote. I, I mean, <laughs> he might as well be Machote running as a name of Andrew Denmark. I mean, who even knows? You can't do that, there's no way. Anyways, we'll get to the bottom of who that guy is. Now, I know something about Sergeant Farmer before. He sued the Vallas of Daily Times before and won about some crap. <coughs> so look him up too, Sergeant Farmer. Vallas of Georgia, Lowndes County. Uh, Sergeant Farmer basically um, and Denmark had pulled me over. You know, I'm like, what the hell? Uh, here we go. You know, immediately they wanted, they, all, all they're going to smell was the marijuana. So, what is it? It's like automatic. There's no question. There's nothing. You're just getting drug out of the vehicle at that point. And what happens? They find a bag of sugar in my car, like in a little plastic bag, basically, that was used for, I guess, tea, coffee, whatever, right? Sugar. I get charged because it was in a bag, I guess, and because 
they found mar a cannabis, uh, the small amount of cannabis I had on me. Use the term cannabis, is like the appropriate name. And I get charged with a felony once again for a misdemeanor. Why? Because they find sandwich bags in the car in a box. I mean, oh my God, man. I mean, I can't tell you. You guys don't believe me until hopefully now. I mean, <laughs> I'm gonna, it doesn't matter. I'm going to stack it up. I'll, I've thought about walking around the courthouse literally with all the paperwork that I've gotten uh, that I have from Lowndes County and Remerton and GSP. Let's put it all like that. Put you all in the one region because that's who you are. You're all together. You're all together collectively. And I'm not, I'm not done. I'm not even done. I don't know how long this is going to let me go, but I'm going to go ahead and tell you. This is hard to do. This is actually really hard to do. Um... <clears throat> All right, so basically what we have going on is just the multiple incidents of harassment by the Lowndes County Jail. And I'm trying to name every single one. 2015, 2010, 2006. 2006 with Andrew Denmark and Sergeant Farmer. 2006 basically ended up, you know, me being in handcuffs, going to the Lowndes County Jail, getting charged with intent to distribute an imitation controlled substance for sugar. Getting charged with an imitate, uh, getting charged with an intent to distribute uh, marijuana. Felony, felony. Um, boom. Then, guess what? My grandmother dies after that shit happens. What do I do? I want to go smoke some marijuana after the funeral. Marijuana. I want to smoke some cannabis after the funeral. So what do I do? I go to my friend's house. Nope, you're not going to your friend's house. We're pulling you over because you were going around the corner just a little too too fast for Mr. Uh, Green, Mr. State Trooper Green. You, you know, the one that, that get, basically gets reprimanded for uh, for pulling you over for a rolling stop? Yeah, that guy. The guy that gets uh, sent to Tifton instead of Lowndes? Yeah, that guy. That guy chases me all the fucking way to Owsley from Snake Nation Road. And yes, I did run. I was sick of that, and I was in a fast bike. I was in a CBR 1000. I went 170 miles an hour. And yes, I got charged with that. And yes, they dropped all that, or Noli Pross that garbage. But he put a gun to my head to come out of that my friend's house for some marijuana, for some cannabis. Because he, did, he didn't think that I should go around that curb. He didn't think I should be allowed to do that. Your life should be in danger, and my life should definitely be in danger for that. You know what he told me? He told, he had the nerve to sit there and tell me, oh, oh my God. He had the nerve to tell me. First of all, let me get this out of the way. First, I'm, I'm charged, if I, if I refuse, this is what he tells me, threatens me. If I refuse to have anybody, I mean, if I refuse to have my, um, uh, my urine tested, basically, at the South Georgia Medical Center, then that I would lose my license for one solid year. No ifs, ands, or buts. There's nothing I could do about it. That's what he told me on the way to South Georgia Medical Center. So what do I do? I consent to my urine thinking, you know what? If you try to test this, I'm going to plead not guilty. For one thing, how in the hell are you trying to claim that I'm intoxicated on something that you guys know nothing about in the first place? And the next thing, you know... Why are you even following me? Why are you threatening me? Why are you always up in my business? Well, so anyways, get taken to jail. All that gets combined with the 2006 incident. I get Jason Kane, Chain Gain Kane, as a lawyer, as a public pretender, as a public punk ass. What does he do? He tells me straight up, if you want to plead not guilty to, to these charges, basically, or if you just only want to plead to the marijuana the misdemeanor, then I am not going to say anything in the courtroom. Okay? I'm not going to say anything in the courtroom. That's what he said. All right, so what do I do? I end up taking a plea for sugar and, and marijuana. The felony. The felonies that I told you about. I took those to get the hell out of that fucking jail because I could not get out. Excuse me for cussing. I'm sorry, but I can't help it. It's really hard. To get the hell out of that jail... I accepted that plea from that sorry son of a piece of trash who's running for office. He's running for multiple offices. Look at this. I mean, just look at your town and look at this. 
Look at Lowndes County and look at the, look what you could be and look what you are. You're a bunch of scum because of these people. They just they have nothing but slavery work for you and the factories. They want you to work at Langdale. They want you to work at these these uh, places that basically require felons to be there. And how do they make you out of a felon? They make all drugs illegal. They make everything illegal. So they come after your butt and label you as a felon and have you working in their factories because that's all you can damn do. Working at Lowe's, working at Dillard's, working at Home Depot, calling you out. Working at uh, Scruggs, working at, like I said, Langdale. Working in the paper mill in Clyattville. You got all these big factories and where do you, what do you need? You need slaves for that garbage, don't you? Yeah, okay. All right, so uh, 90, 80 to 90% of everybody in the Lowndes County Jail is actually innocent in some way, shape, or form and are there for victimless crimes against nobody, hurt nobody. Yes, there might have been some in there. And like I said, there's always room for those guys, but there is not room to be slamming that thing so full that you can't even breathe. I've got low battery, that you can't breathe and that you can't walk around, you can't get attention, you can't get medical attention when you need it. You got people with seizures and issues like that not getting the right treatment. I wrote down on there, you can look it up, that I had scurvy because I didn't have vitamin C and I had bleeding gums, multiple people had bleeding gums. Nope. Told the health department about black mold locally. Nope. Nope. Do nothing. Say nothing, do nothing. All right, well, I'm saying something, and I'm, I'm done, because you're just now hearing about this, because nobody else is going to talk about this. Who else is going to talk about this? It hasn't happened to them, but it's happened to me, and like I said, I'm not done. 2015, 2010, 2012, I mentioned, the, uh, there's two times, there's one with, uh, I think it's 11 and 12, with the, uh, Remer both in Remerton. Uh, the ones with Scott Goodwin, but I'll double check to make sure. But like I said, it happened. If I said it happened, it damn sure happened. And you can double check me, triple check me, sue me, whatever you need to do. Go ahead, do what you need to do. But, uh, so anyways, all right, so we've got like six instances of, of, of harassment. Oh, here we go. They finally did this uh, monopoly here. What a perfect way. Go directly to jail. We need to go go to jail. That's what we need to be at. It says go to action instead of go to jail. Go directly to freaking go to auction. Oh, there we go. Yeah, it is. Let's see what we got here. King Robo. Anyways, you guys see that? So, anyways, like I'm just trying to tell you guys. I mean, it's ridiculous, man. They, these people can ruin your life, and I'm not trying to let that happen to anybody else because I've got to call it out. You know. This is this is ridiculous. You guys should you, nobody should have to be under this kind of uh, of treatment and tyranny. It's 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 crazy. Yeah, well, look at that little gangster kid, or a cow, or whatever that. That's like a. I guess that's supposed to be a cow. It's got whiskers. <laughs> I don't know. Whatever it is. Are they rats? They're like little rats. Okay, that's what it is. I'm sorry. Yeah, that is about right. We're little rats in a cage, right? Smashing pumpkins. Despite all my rage, I've been a rat in a cage for so long. And uh, here I am. I'm breaking out. I'm showing you guys. I'm fresh out of jail. Fresh out of Lowndes County Jail. Making a, making a, a, a remake hit single. You should check it out. Acon for a while, youtube.com, Acon for a while, because I'm only going to be a convict for a while, with a C now, not with a K, watch your, I like the African stuff, Acon, but you know what I mean, like that other stuff with the girls and stuff, you know, watch yourself with that stuff, bro, but, uh, but good work otherwise, I guess, you know what I'm saying, repping the, the struggle, and, uh, so, um, definitely, man, um, I just got to put it out there, and I'll, I'll put it out obviously in more specific detail. It's going to be legal consequences, and it's going to be exposed. I'm going to mention everything that I can. A lot of stuff I can't because it's just so many things that the only way for me to tell you what happened is to just tell you like this. And, I mean, like I said, the recent Supreme Court ruling about 
these these states thinking they don't have to pay victims, they're you're gonna have to pay me. So I'm sorry, Louds County, for the residents because it's like they always get punished. If I could, I would go after these guys. I would go after they should their pen. He threatened me with his pension. He told me, he said, he said, I'm trying to make sure you're uh I'm trying to make sure my $70,000 a year pension is not going to be, you know, taken away from doing this right here, taking you to jail wrongfully, basically. So it's like, you know, <laughs> he straight up told me, take it out of his fucking pension. But you know what? That's not enough. It's not just, it's the agency, it's the policies, it's these, it's the harassment. It's, it's all working together. It's nobody doing anything. It's going to jail. Nobody catching on to anything. Nobody caring about the victims. Nobody... You know, uh, I mean, I've heard of stories where guys got beat so bad, and I can, another uh, witness, that they can't, that the, basically the bonder, you know, the bonding agency wanted to take a picture of them because it's like, dude, you can't, you know, you're hurt, you know, these guys hurt you. And he was so ready to get out probably because he had addictions to something. I think he was really just trying to get out, you know, but... You know, it goes on. It goes on. It's all no. It's known about. There's a lot of stuff. I mean, there's a lot of people talking about there. Uh, George, is it George Haynes? Uh, I believe he's been talking about the uh, the 30 deaths in Lowndes County Jail and so forth. You know, shout out to him and the Kendrick Johnson family. I love you guys. You know, I'm gonna help you. I'm gonna call you. Um, um, you know, if I can, um, I, I can get in contact with you through family. Uh, but uh, you know, I was wanting to make something about that too. So I'm gonna. I'm repping the hood, man. I'm I, I'm not seeing it by anybody. You guys are scared. I'm in jail. You guys are talking about. You're scared. You're scared. You, these, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. Lowndes County is too powerful. There's a curse. I've heard there's a curse on this county. There's nothing you can do. So, I'm calling you out. There's no curse. The curse is, is the ignorance and the stubbornness of not doing anything about what's wrong. So, we're gonna get activated and motivated. Um, but I'll keep you posted on the status there's still pending disposition they told me it's quote unquote fallen the status is it's quote unquote fallen so what the hell does that mean that means case dismissed and that you don't want to answer to what's going on prosecution you guys are so full of it you guys you guys had me you had two two public pretenders in my face trying to get me to have a, a psychiatric evaluation for what <laughs> for wanting to plead not guilty Oh, and, and yeah, that's what you do. If you plead not guilty in Lowndes County, what you do now, that's really cool. You get to have a psychiatric evaluation by a, a one hospital in Thomasville. Yeah, one hospital in Thomasville. That's where you get to go if you have to plead not guilty. Because you might have a problem. You might have a problem. You know what the law says about that? No. You don't just think that somebody has a problem and had forced psychiatric evaluation on people. That is illegal by your own laws in the state of Georgia. So did I consent to that? Hell no. And my new attorney, you know, that I had to get, basically, was able to get that dropped. Byron Watson. Thank you, Byron. Byron is struggling right now. He's being patient. Thank you, Byron. You're doing a good job. I mean, I know what you're dealing with, man. It's hard. Like, how, how can you fault everybody sometimes? I mean, I know that you want to think that every lawyer is bad, but, and all cops are bad, but, uh, oh man, you just got to have some due diligence, faith, and, you know, the will to, to try to see a positive outcome and a change, because that's what we're going to see. If we keep, if we keep up uh, the activism and keep up calling these people out. What they're doing, they can't hide anymore. They can't hide now. It's all being exposed now. I can show this to anybody. Anybody can watch this. So, I'm trying to give it a rundown, you know, um, of just what's destroyed my life. So, I'm seeking a pardon, and thank you. If you paid attention to this this far, thank you. Thank you. And if you want to help me out in any way, or you have any suggestions, please feel free to message me. Um, I'm going to seek a pardon. I want governor deal to look at this I want the new sheriff and old sheriff Ashley Polk to look at this but I don't really at this point really have too much faith you know Mr. Polk you did stop on the side of the road one time and you did help me and my 
Father, I was on the side of the road from some incident that probably happened from one of your friends. So, yeah, he's no longer with us. He put his hands on my face. And he's no longer with us now, but I don't know really what happened to him. I know that something happened to him, but I don't know, you know. I know he was a real, he was a spoiled brat, and I know that he was like running around like a tyrant in the in the town, you know, doing a lot of stuff. But uh, there's a lot of stuff I just you know, like I said, I can't even I, I can't even, I'm, I'm not even brushing the surface yet. I'm telling you guys, you guys think that only black people get harassed? No, if you're white and you have a black friend, you get harassed. That's what happens too. Okay. And so, you know, that's what this, the, the expert opinion is. Policeabuse.com, shout out to Don Jackson, a.k.a. Kamau. <laughs> Thank you, man. I love you, brother. You're doing awesome work. If you want to check him out, look on YouTube, Don Jackson. He will uh, go undercover for you if you want to, and he will expose these people for you, and he will be an expert witness for you. And he's in, he's in the area of the Lowndes County area. He, you know, he's, he's not too far away, so... He's in a good spot, you know, for that particular area because there's probably going to be so many cases coming from there. I've already got a call from somebody from my website uh, uh, message, you know. So, you know, I direct them to police abuse. If anybody has any kind of issues, go to policeabuse.com. They will help you out through the whole situation. You're not alone in this. And that's what we need to do is form a victim's alliance. Police victim's alliance to where we are not going to take it anymore. The numbers are going to stack up so high. There's one-fourth of Americans out of 350 million Americans there's one-fourth of us that have a criminal record you think we have a voice you damn right we do we have all of the voice and all the power they've been harassing us for this long they owe us it's ours everything is ours everything you've taken from us is ours everything you've taken from us we're taking it back I want my county back. I want everything back. I want my life back. I want my family back. I want everything back the way it was and restored. And what do you think it's worth? What was your what is your your child's life worth and their reputation worth and their career and their future? To be going from 19 years of age, 18, 19 years of age to have your entire youth robbed from you. Your entire youth robbed from you. Basically, which I've been able to enjoy. I'm here because my parents have actually, you know, basically um, strived with me the whole way and prayed, and God's been with us the entire time. My parents go to church. You know, my parents believe, but it takes more than belief. It takes action, right? So this is the action, and, and they're helping out a tremendous amount. And now thank, uh, thank you to my mother and father, Bobby and Alice Watson, you are amazing. You've helped me through everything, and thank you for supporting me. I know that times have been rough, been through a lot of stuff, but uh, I do love you and I thank you. So I'm gonna cut this short. I gotta go ahead. I, I'm sorry that I can't just continue, but I've got more. I've got more um, to give and show. I'm not gonna uh, give in. I'm not going to uh, um, take any kind of um, settlement without it being anything anything reasonable. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'll keep everybody posted. You know who I am. Those who know who I am. If you don't, you know, you're getting to meet me. My name is Alan, and I'm Acom for a while. And this is my channel, and this is my Facebook. This is my way to tell you. This is my way to, you know, vent what's happened to me. And hopefully it does not happen to you, and it prevents anything else from that. Uh, uh, area from happening to anybody else because it affects everybody in the nation. People go through I-75 and that place got number one drug arrests. I believe it was in uh, somewhere around the year 2000. But um, yeah, so Lowndes County, Georgia. All right, guys, I love you guys for supporting me. If you've made it this far, man, I really seriously appreciate it. And uh, with support, uh, support that you want to give, of course, I would appreciate anything. Um, but I'm trying to get obviously. The county to settle the agency to uh, take responsibility for what's happened so thank you so much I appreciate it